In Norway, they did research on it, and they said oh, there is almost no tax evasion from my own experience and those of my colleagues. I would say there is some, quite some tax evasion. Um, well, let's just for a minute look at the high incomes because um, so far these days we've been talking about new media artists who were successful, yeah, and then you get these high incomes, and it's uh, the graph is not large enough. Um, if you really look at the very high incomes, you get, you get far above the 50,000 euro yeah? um, income per year. So uh, this line could go on all the way over the hall. <laughs> um, so there are some very, very high incomes, but it's so small a number. It's, it's not 1%, but it's 0, uh, 1%, which uh, goes over the top. So if so many artists are earning less than the poverty line, how do they survive? Um, assuming that tax evasion doesn't really help very much. Uh, well, you probably know the obvious answer. Uh, a very important uh, answer is they have second jobs. That's the main answer. Then, of course, there is uh, some have social benefits, yeah? um, but increasingly in now in European countries, you know, some 20 years ago, you could stay a visual artist for 30 years just by receiving social benefits. That's no longer possible. They've become much more restrictive. Um, what about partners, family, um, friends? I think partners are very important in uh, sustaining visual artists. Um, uh, there again, it's difficult to do research on that, but yes, I think they are very, very important. And then, of course, there's sort of luxury artists who uh, in an earlier phase in their life had good jobs, so they save money or they have yeah, possessions. Many of the bohemian artists of the 19th century were not poor. They had family which sustained them, which were qu quite rich. And of course, we, said, we noticed before that uh, uh, the parents of artists are on average highly educated, so there is money in the family. Whether it goes to the artist is not a matter. Um, okay, Subsidies, we shouldn't forget about that, are not are in this line. It's income, yeah? so it doesn't raise this line. Uh, but let's just let look at the... Uh, line for, um, of, so now I've added a line, the pink line, and that is income from work. Yeah? So there the second jobs are in that line, so you see a jump back, it's suddenly only 40% who are below the poverty line. Um, so it's all these second jobs, but also unemployment benefits. And, um, uh, and in but second jobs are the most important. Second jobs are um, in Western countries, in between 60 and 90% of artists have second jobs. That depends a bit on the different, uh, on the country. And I would think, but you, you please tell me later on, uh, that in Taiwan it would be close to the 90% and the 60%. Uh, however, keep in mind that these can be non-art jobs and art-related jobs. And especially in the case of art-related jobs, the line is not always sharp. So it could be teaching art um, and that sort of thing. We should talk about that a bit more. Um, yeah, you also call nowadays, you also call it multiple job holding, but I think that's too neutral in term. It's, it's sort of yeah, I would say, ah, you have different jobs and they're all equal. Well, in the case of artists, I think what makes an artist an artist is that he says, my art job is my first job. That's what matters. And the rest, whether it be 30 hours a week, is not uh, my first job. Um, but, of course, hourly income of non-art uh, non -art jobs and art-related jobs is much higher than uh, of the art job. Otherwise, you wouldn't do it. Yeah? You would just do art, maybe with a few exceptions. I like my second job, so I do it anyway. Um, I'm going to show one more graph. 
and that is a graph of overall income. Um, that's the dotted line. Um, so that includes, but it's very specula spectacular. Uh, it's and there's no real research on it. So then you add not only the income from work, but also from partners, family, um, from a mecenas is possible. Sometimes from gallery owners, it depends a bit on the system. It's becoming old fashioned that uh, gallery owners uh, yeah, are mecenases. Still, it's possible, although often um, if they pay you a salary, which still happens, uh, it would be work from uh, work from art, so it would be included in this line. Still, the dotted line is interesting because I have the impression that here it's pretty um, yeah, horizontal because the artist must live, so it can't be very, very much below the poverty line, although the poverty line is of course relative, still. Um, Now, it's not that important, but still, um, we have to remember that um, the artists, this number of artists who, uh, for instance, has income from work which is higher or here, is, doesn't have to have the same composition as this group of artists. Um, for instance, maybe I would be here personally. So I could be a luxury artist. Uh, as an artist, I would be here, but due to my relatively well-paid second job, I suddenly am in this group. So the groups are not completely, have, don't have completely the same composition, and that could be an interesting in, uh, development. Uh, nowadays, there are artists who, um, yeah, choose to earn more in their second job and not minimize on the second job, but uh, um, uh, uh, so, um, well, I come to that in a minute, but so there are sort of luxury artists um, and you probably know them in your surroundings as well. Um, well, just one final thing. Uh, Keep in mind that the average incomes of artists have not always been low. Um, even in the 19th century, when already this new attitude to, towards the arts was coming in existence, average income were not, was not so bad. There's quite a bit of evidence uh, about that. Um, they were not well paid, but they were a profession which did reasonably well. So really these very large numbers of artists and very low incomes also in the West is a post-Second War phenomenon. And, um, uh, well, as I noticed in Japan, it's an even more recent develop, uh, development. And there are still a number of artists who do re relatively well, but they're not contemporary artists. Okay. Um, let's get to the next topic, and that is the work preference. Subsidies are not so important. Um, artists have what you call a work preference. Um, let's do it. Oh. Hang on. I have to explain it. Um, when artists have second jobs, um, they start to earn more than they need for living. Yeah? Usually the second job is paid better, um, but they don't keep that money. They use the money to cut down on the number of hour hours they work in the second job in order to spend more in making arts. Um, and I have an example of that. I uh, used to work with models um, in my drawings, and they, they, they were usually dancers. Uh, they left uh, the dance academy for one or two years, and uh, I had this strange experience. First of all, they were greedy, yeah? the opposite of what you expect with artists. They really wanted to, to negotiate with me. Other models, they just stated their price, and I said, okay or not okay. No, they wanted to get as much money out of it as possible. Uh, and they would say, well, I'm very good, I'm a dancer. And Indeed, they often were very good, so uh, I was willing to pay them more. Um, 
but then something strange happened. They got uh, a project. Um, so suddenly there was money coming in uh, for them. And they said, OK, I'm not going to work for you anymore, um, which was strange, of course. Um, and I would offer them more, yeah, even more, if they were good. No, I'm not going to work for you <laughs> anymore. <laughs> because at that very moment, they had enough money to make a living, and they immediately cut down on their second job. Um, and uh, after a while, of course, the project was finished, the money was finished, and they would come back to me and again start to negotiate. <laughs> so that's the way it, it goes. And that's a work preference. It's strange. Other people, normal people, yeah, uh, would at least start to use part of the money to go on holiday, to, well, all sorts of consumption. But these artists, especially young artists, they use the money for their job. And of course, some, it can be that artists already work full time as artists or uh, keep the number of hours the same, but then the extra money is again not used for, um, for consumption but it's used for buying equipment, like the video camera, etc. Which is, so they make sort of a, a balancing, well, how much can I use for working more hours in the arts, and what do I use for equipment, which is quite relevant in the new media arts. Um, I wonder why I don't have these slides, maybe. No, I'm missing a slide, doesn't matter. Um, I'm not saying that the work preference is only, does only exist among artists. I think there are many other professions in which pe people can have a little bit of a work preference, and especially individuals. But on average, there is a large difference between artists or even teachers or nurses who also may have a slight work preference. But it's a matter of degree. Um, again, with age, artists, uh, the work preference of artists may go down a bit. Um, it's difficult to tell. You could also say their poverty line goes up a bit, especially when you get married. Uh, you have to keep up with other people at least a little bit, so you may buy a car. Uh, uh, so then whether you say the work, work preference goes down or the needs go up, it's a matter of uh, look. But you could say that with success, uh, the work preference may... Uh, become less. When artists become successful, they don't spend all money anymore on their art job. Although they become very willing to spend money on more expensive, um, uh, um, more expensive equipment, catalogs, etc. There's still many ways you can use your money for, uh, for arts. But of course, those artists who are up there, yeah, I was referring to, they're not spending all their money on arts. They know better ways. Uh, although some like to get down to the artist level. I know, think of uh, people like um, Francis Bacon, uh, Lucian Freud, who gamble and sort of get rid of their money as soon as possible so can they can uh, yeah, be again together with their colleagues, poor colleagues. Um, so it's really these horizontal lines where you could say there's a work preference. Um, people could have earned more, but they spend it on working more hours in the arts or on equipment. So their overall income yeah, uh, doesn't uh, go up very much. And then after certain states, I think it does go up, but not that much. Especially not if you could say with age, etc., this minimum income also has to rise a bit. Okay. Let's see where we are. We talked about it. So it's especially young artists. Who, so it's especially young artists who you could say have a hundred um, percent uh, work preference. Now, just one word about, about support for artists. So subsidies for artists. If artists, and especially young artists, have a strong work preference, that means that subsidies. Uh, will translate itself in just more artists being there. So the average income of artists doesn't go up. 
due to the subsidies? No, it attracts only more artists. That's quite a big theme in my book. Um, and um, you can best understand it if you are aware that there are three groups of artists. The first are artists who are not poor. They are well above this uh, um, minimum income line, etc. And then there are artists who are altogether poor. They are on this side. So if they earn only a little bit less, yeah, their overall income goes down a little bit, so they're below this poverty line, they have to stop doing art. They really have to get to work only in their second job. Uh, nevertheless, this group can be very inventive. They find always new ways to continue being artists. Not all of them, of course, but I'm sh yeah, amazed about how inventive very poor artists can be. Um, and then there is a large group in between who are operating in with their overall income on this poverty line, but indeed having these work preferences would not have needed to be poor if they uh, if they would have been willing to work a few more hours in their second job um, or um, spend a little bit less money on their equipment buy a cheaper video camera they could have raised their uh, the, their income for consumption uh, but they don't so if subsidies come in um, well a few of them will join of this big intermediate group yeah, of artists who seen from outside didn't need to be poor a few of them would join the group of uh, yeah, artists who are not poor um, so in that sense the middle group would become smaller but then the artists who are on the edge uh, who could fall off also it's now possible due to the subsidies you have a little bit more perspective of m yeah, managing as an artist um, the new people will be attracted, so uh, support for artists, which in the Western countries was um, often motivated by the low incomes of artists, uh, and in especially in social democrat countries, was intended to raise their income, never did raise their income, I have quite some evidence of that, but only increased the numbers. So as I said at the beginning, in countries where there is uh, where there is much subsidy, uh, for artists, numbers are larger. Um, so it's a bit yeah, sad, but subsidies are no solution for low incomes and may even increase the number of artists who, yeah, for whom there's not much work and maybe not much s satisfaction. Um, so I was mentioning for this intermediate group, the large group who, of artists who do not necessarily have to be poor, that they seen from outside have a choice. But it's important to realize that it's seen from outside. An outsider could say, ah, you, you could have done better if you wouldn't have had such a strong work preference. Um, but um, uh, for them, it's not really a choice. It's natural to do it the way they do. I come back to that topic. Um, I'm going to skip this.